Hello, everybody. Welcome to another technology lesson. Um, this technology lesson is going to be a little bit different than the others. Um, <clears throat> in some of the other lessons, I've put up some work that's a bit more open, that looks at like all of the other different things that we do with technology. Um, what I put in, what today's lessons, lesson is going to be about will be the general focus of technology throughout this term. Um, where's my mouse? There we go. So our technology topic will be design and technology. So just so that you know what work you're doing, let's put technology at the top of our page and our heading underneath that will be design and technology. When we're talking about design and technology, there are two really big words that stand out here. <laughs> the two big words that stand out are going to be not and. If you thought it was and, I'm sorry, but it's design and technology. Design and technology are the two big words that stand out. So first things first in your books, I want you to pause the video in a second um, and then write down what you think design means in this setting and what you think technology means in this setting. So hit the pause button, design, technology, boom, go for it. Back to the awkward pause just to give you guys some time to pause the video. So when we're talking about the design aspect, we will be looking at a problem and planning for a solution. When I say planning for a solution, we're going to be looking at something that we need to do and then work out what we can do to get it done. Let me get rid of this line just to give me a little bit more space. So the technology part of this is that we're going to be creating something using tools. Here's where some of us get a bit stuck. We think tools are just hammers and screwdrivers and drills. But tools are a whole bunch of different things. Tools could be our, our technology book because we're going to be drawing and planning our thing out. Tools could be our little like wires and cables because we might be moving things around. So this being our first lesson looking at this stuff, we're going to be finding out what our problem is and then working out how we're going to be doing it. This is going to be our big goal for the whole term. It's not a bit, it's not a rush project, right? I'm going to let you know. What do I always say? The first time we do something is the worst time that we do it. The first time is always the worst because we're planning. We find out the things that we want to try, but don't really work. So in understanding that we're going to have to be making edits and adjustments throughout. You guys might have a project and I might come and say, I don't think ABC is going to work. Have another crack at it. Try and change some things. I need you guys to be okay with trying to change some of those things. So what we're going to be working on are some wooden boxes. I'm really sorry, guys. I've been talking all day and recording videos all day. So I've got my hot chocolate here to try and keep my throat a bit warm. It's the worst time to have a sore throat from talking all day, but not actually be sick because everyone thinks that you're sick. So what we will be creating today, and before some of you guys go, oh, Mr. Hosni, I've already done this. We're going to be making wooden boxes. Oh, Mr. Hosni, you've already done this. <laughs> I know that some of you have made wooden boxes in other classes, but this one's going to be a bit different. Wooden boxes can be used for a whole range of different things. You could make any wooden box for any specific purpose. And I'm going to leave it open to you guys to see what kind of wooden box you want to make. Like, for instance, you might decide that. I don't think anyone in the class is actually into it, but you might love tabletop gaming where um, bear with me. You know, tabletop gaming where you are, oh, no, not, not images. There we go. 
where you have these like different like board games. None of these are the ones that I'm talking about. So you could try and make a game box like this. This is a 10 in one box and maybe not exactly like that. Um, oh, I can't think of tabletop games, big map. Um, big map figurines. Okay, I can't find specifically what I'm talking about. Hold on, I'm going to transition to this scene. Um, sorry guys, I'm, I'm trying to Google something and find out what... So I remember I read an article where people were 3D printing their figurines for these tabletop games. Okay, <laughs> so there are these tabletop games where you look at the movement of the characters and you like people have 3D printed these like figurines that look like this. And so you might be really into something like this. You might say, oh, Mr. Hosni, that's from Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons. How did I not know it was from Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> but there are other tabletop games where like people go across these big maps you might be really into that and want to design a box where you can store these figurines. You might want to design a box where it has different layers and sort of as you pull, as you open it, it opens up the two layers and it comes in two separate sections. But this is all like big picture, end of the line stuff. That's when we get to the end when we're creating our box. What we're looking at today is we're in our first step. We're looking at some wooden boxes and we're going to start practicing our technical drawings. So I literally went to Google and I typed in wooden boxes. Then I went over and I hit images. I'll scroll down a little bit just to have a look. <laughs> I went down and I pressed images. Now I know for a fact that someone in the class made a box that looked almost exactly like this design wise. Um, it had the similar type of uh, latch at the front. It didn't really have these, but the student was great enough to get, buy his own latch and hinges off of eBay to create his own box. Um, we're going to have a look at some of these boxes and we're going to practice our technical drawings. I'm going to try and do a technical drawing, but I can't connect my other computer to this computer to show you the drawing. So I'm going to have to do it by mouse. Um, but let's have a look at some of the big boxes that we can that we can build. I'm going to open some tabs and just sort of prepare some stuff. Just those two. We'll run with those two for now. So as we look at these boxes, here we can see that this box. Can I scroll in and zoom in? No, not really. It's about the same size. So I'm not going to. So this box is the hinge. The, sorry, the two hinges and the latch at the front. Nice, simple design. We can see that it's got a really thick lid. So it doesn't sit, the lid doesn't sit flat on the box, but it's got a bit of a gap in the lid. This box has one, two, three, four, five by two, three, four, five. So 25, and it says it in the name, I could have read it. <laughs> it has 25 small compartments that you can put things in. And it's literally, all they did was they pre-cut it and slipped it in place. We're going to have a look at the different ways that we can prepare and organize all of this stuff. This one has a really, oh, you can't see it because of my face. Nope, not that one. Okay. This box here has a really intricate design on top. It's sort of like a, a tree of life carved into the top of it. Now, as we go through, this one's designed a little bit more like a crate. That one's got a whole bunch, so we'll click on that to open it. But we can see that they're designed in many different ways. This one's even got a really creative way that the different sides link into each other. 
Now, we've got some really small, simple ones that I know some of the other classes did last term. As we go through, here's a bigger one. This, um, oh, my face is covering it again. I'm sorry. Here's a bigger one that we can see is um, they use to store spices. This is a really creative one where they've locked, it looks like they've locked these two pieces into a base one and then it's like spreads open without both sides coming off. Here's what I don't expect you guys to draw these really big or like prepare and make these really big over the top things. Because we're practicing, what we're looking at now is, what we're looking at this term is, um, our preparation for like does learning how to use these tools and learning how to make these things. As soon as I move the camera across, I need it back over. Oh, not that one, not that one, that one. Okay, so this is a really simple box, but it fits its design perfectly. We can see that the lid slides on. They've pre-cut little hole, like little gaps in the wood so that the lid can slide through and, st and it gets locked in place on the other side. Some of these boxes are, have really amazing designs. This one here is designed, I can't see what they're storing in there. Oh, jars and bottles and things. You could make it so that it's tiered and then things stack on top of each other. Here's another big 50 compartment box. As we go through these, we can see, what's that? Album, an album box. But you guys don't use albums. You guys don't use CDs. Your generation's too cool for that stuff. <laughs> so we're gonna go through and have a look. We can see this box here, the person's mixed a bunch of different woods in. I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna be really expensive to do something like that. So we're probably not gonna do that. This one as well is one type of wood and then a, a like feature type of wood in the middle. This one's got a handle on top. That one is a jewelry box. This one looks really, really cool. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but they, they look like they might be bigger. Okay. Oh, you guys could make a gigantic treasure chest. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have a look at these boxes. These ones look, look like they're made out of recycled wood. Recycled wood means that we've taken wood from one source and used it to make something else. Depending on how expensive the wood is when I go to buy it, we might be able to make a couple of different boxes. We might even be able to make a pencil case for you guys to use. Okay, that looks really cool. It looks like they've used this combination of boxes to make a bit of a coffee table. All right, next one over. So we open this one. This one's just, they, I thought they were boxes, but it looks like they're, they're illustrations of different boxes that, that people have designed online. So what we've done here is the person's taken their technical drawings and they've used something like 3D paint to design it. So, what we're going to be doing in your technology workbooks, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make this a little smaller. So in your technology workbooks, we don't need that top technology. We're good. Actually, boom, we're in, we're done. No, we're not, because my big head is my head in the way the whole time. I'm sorry, guys. All right. I'm good there. I'm not blocking anything. So in our technology workbooks, you should have the heading written, your own definition, and then my definition of design and technology as it, as it pertains to this term. Then I want you to write these questions and then write your answer underneath. We're not going to be going through the different answers in this video. I want to see what your answers are. 
really there's no wrong wrong answer. As I was writing out these questions, in the question of what would people not store in a wooden box, I, I in my head said jewellery. Well, you wouldn't put jewellery in a wooden box. And the first thing that came up was a jewellery box. And I thought, oh, of course. Now, I might not store my jewellery in a wooden box. Not that I really have much jewellery, but still, other people might. Some people might say, oh, I don't want to store food in a wooden box. Some people might say, oh, but that's the best place to put it. It's up to you. There's no wrong answer for this. So what are some uses for boxes? Where do we see wooden boxes in our everyday lives? What, um, what do people usually store in a wooden box? I'm going to give you a clue. Don't answer vampires for this one, even though they might keep a wooden box. I think I'm funny. I know no one's laughing. Thanks, guys. Actually, there's probably a couple of people trying to mimic my life right now. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> and the last question, what would people not store in a wooden box? So work on these questions and answers in your workbooks. Pause the video. Get started on that. Took a long drink from my drink to give you guys plenty of time to pause the video. Now. Nope. There we are. All right. The next thing that we're looking at is called technical drawing. Technical drawing is when oh, I've set up these scenes. I might as well use them. Technical drawing is where we take an idea that we have or a problem or a solution or a design element or a technology element. We take our ideas and then we try and plan them out, draw them out into this really over the top detailed picture. Now, when we're looking at these pictures, some of them might not make much sense when we're looking at them. So as I'm looking at this, I, I don't know. My first thought was maybe it's a train, but as I see this part, I think maybe it's like, um, I'm looking at the thing and I, I wasn't even showing you. So this picture here, as I look at it, it just looks like a whole bunch of lines. But as I look at different, I see different things in it. It looks like it might be the internal mechanics of, of something. I don't know what specifically. I'm going to open that one up. So we're going to have a look at, where are we? Here we are, at some different technical drawings. We're going to prepare some things up, some things that this is a really good one. It's a technical drawing for the Apple logo. So something that's really simple, but someone's put a whole bunch of effort into it. Now I'm going to put that there and I'm going to try and stretch it out here. So what they've done in this technical drawing is they've gone through and they've put all of the different measurements. And they've even said what it's going to look like when it's done. So this will be polished chrome. Polished chrome here. They've added all of the different lines and the different measurements from different points. We might not be making something as heavy duty as this. Um, we'll get to that. So this one is a technical drawing of some buildings. Um, they have some of the measurements there, but not all of the measurements in there. We can see how high they expect it to be. And we might even think that each line across would be a different level in the building or a different um, measurement high. On this side, we can see that they are like they look at where these different buildings fall in line with each other. This is a super heavy duty technical drawing no matter how much i tried i could never do something this detailed or this good so if you're stressing about seeing something like this don't i'm going to show you the kind of technical drawing that i expect it's, it's it's not this here we can see well here we can see this technical drawing they've labeled the different parts and they've shown how this operates so this might be a very simple engine of sorts. I, I have no idea what it is, but 
We're looking at something similar to this, but probably even simpler, because we're preparing our first time. So, where is my mouse? There we go. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get my, I had to like scrunch everything up to zoom it in. Now I've just got to bring it back. This was something that we did on a different day. Can I clear the canvas? Boom, boom. All right. So this is going to look terrible and I'm sorry in advance, but let's come up with like a problem. Let's say that. I want to make a box where I can put my... I'm trying to think of something silly that you guys never do. I'm trying to find a box that I can put a shirt in. So first I'm going to get a ruler and I'm going to measure how big a shirt is. So let's say that... No. Can I... How will I draw? Oh, I have to press the thing, don't I? Okay, this is going to look really strange. Will it work like that? Nope. All right. This isn't going to work for me. All right. So let's say that I measure up my shirt. Oh, mate. I am struggling with this. Okay. <laughs> Don't laugh that one of my shirt's arm is wider and longer. Than the other one. <laughs> so let's say this is my shirt. And then when I measure my shirt, let's say it's ah uh, five meters. Five meters up and down. And three meters across. I know that my box needs to be a little bit bigger than the, my shirt that I'm making. So if I'm designing my box, oh, that was, that was meant to be a straight line. <laughs> Still not a straight line, but it is what it is. All right. So let's say that this line is, I was going to make it five, but I almost made a mistake. Let's say that this line is six meters. And this line is four meters. Oh, mate, this box is terrible. Hopefully you guys, so when you're doing this part, you guys would use rulers to make your box, to make your technical drawing. And then how deep should my box be? Let's say I want to put five shirts in there. So I'm going to make it one meter, which is way too big for five shirts, but still. Oh, mate. These lines are getting worse and worse. I'll move my camera out of the way of that. Sorry, guys. No, not that one. You know what? I'll just kick me out of the screen so that you guys can see this. You don't see me like struggling with my with my picture. So we've got here one meter, four meters, five meters, uh, six meters of our box. Now this is part one, right? So I'm going to draw a little one there. As we come down, I might have a look at what kind of a lid I'm going to make for this. And let's say I want a lid where, okay. Let's say I want a lid where I can sort of like pop it off. I pull it off and put it down. So you're going to need to look at how I plan on designing this lid. So where am I? Am I here? There we are. So let's say I design my box. Oh, mate. Bang, 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 bang. Okay. Pretend my box isn't horrendous. <laughs> And then I'm going to design my lid to go on top of it. Mate, this is, that's the worst thing I've ever done in my whole life. There, there, there. 
I'm going to try and make it get up. So the way I've tried to design this is that this part at the bottom here is a little bit thinner and it sort of like, like fits inside. And I might put a little handle on top. So here's where I've tried to design this. Now, if my box is, whatever the measurement of my box is, this inside part needs to be just that tiniest bit less so that, oh, okay, I can't get my camera back on this on this just yet. So I'll have to work that out later. I'm sorry, guys. Nope. Okay. I threw it to the side of this, uh, the screen, so it's lost for now. Um, so, just a second, I'm sorry. I'm trying to bring my camera back. Okay, there we go. So, with this box here, with this, where am I? Okay, with this lid here, the inside part needs to fit inside the box. And we're going to have to look at the different ways we can design it. So for now, remember the first time we do something is the worst time we do something. I want you guys to design your first box. So you're going to be Choose a box to store something you love. You know what, guys? I'm going to sack my camera again. Not that one. That one. So choose a box to store something you love. Measure and create a technical drawing of the box that you are thinking of. Now this, this box doesn't have to be a real box. It doesn't have to be something that you're, um, it doesn't have to be, be a real box. It doesn't have to be something that you're planning on making. So you could like design a box to store a tractor, but we're not going to be making that, but you will have to measure the size of a box to store that tractor. So maybe think of something that's a bit smaller, a book, a Nintendo switch, something. Okay. When we're talking about creating a technical drawing, I'm not saying super heavy duty, like the ones that we saw, I'm talking more technical drawing, something like this. Hopefully with more ruled lines, something that looks a little bit better than, or really a much better than mine, but I want to see the best that you can do. So in any case, if you got stuck at any point, go back and rewatch parts of this video. All of this work should be done on a piece of paper so that we can take it, um, take it and paste it into our technology workbooks. If you need help with anything, give myself, um, uh, contact myself or Miss McCallum, or leave a message on the Google Classroom, or ask your parents and carers. Um, but at the end of all that, I hope you have a great day. See you next time.